An oscillating rod attached to a spring. A thin uniform rod with length L capital L and mass capital M is free to rotate around point P in the vertical plane. So this is point P. A horizontal spring with a spring constant of K is attached to the midpoint of the rod as shown. The rod is able to oscillate with small amplitudes around its initial position shown below. So this will oscillate uh, like this. Find the angular frequency of small oscillations. The moment of inertia of this rod for its rotation around point P in the vertical plane is given as capital ML squared over 3. So what we will do is we will consider the torque, the net torque about the pivot point. All right, so consider the net torque about the pivot point. Now, <clears throat> we have to identify the forces acting on this system. Uh, so we have the weight of this uh, rod. It's basically a, we have to check, it's a uniform rod. So therefore, the center of mass is right in the middle. So when this rod is performing this oscillation, you can see that this mg will be pointing down from the center at a distance L over 2 from the pivot point. And if the rod is making an angle theta with respect to the uh, vertical axis here, uh, we can the y-axis that I have labeled, we can see that that angle theta is also the angle, uh, the weight of the rod, uh, the gravitational force makes with respect to the rod. So we can see that it's going to have a perpendicular component mg sine theta that will apply a torque with respect to this pivot point. At the same time, because the rod is attached to the spring, the spring will get stretched by an amount delta x and there will be a spring restoring force fs and you can see that if this is theta, this is 90, 90 minus theta, this angle is theta. So the uh, restoring force will make an angle theta with respect to the normal of the rod. So we, we, we will see that uh, the spring force cosine theta, the component normal to the rod, will be applying a torque with respect to uh, this pivot point P. So let's write the net torque, net torque with respect to point P is equal to, uh, now using the right hand rule, we go from the pivot point to the application point of the force, curl our fingers towards the uh, per perpendicular component of the force, our thumb points up. Uh, so it's the thumb points uh, towards us, that means it's on the Z axis in K hat direction. So the torque is mg, mg sine theta, capital L over 2, in the k hat direction. So it's R cross F, that's torque. Uh, so we go from the pivot point to the application point of the force, that's the R vector, cross with mg. So we have to find the perpendicular component of the weight. The same thing is true for the res restoring force. Here we go from the pivot point to the application point of the force, R cross F, so Fs cosine theta times L over 2, in, but this time our right hand rule tells us that it's in minus k hat direction, so it, it is minus Fs spring restoring force cosine theta capital L over 2 k hat. And this must be equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration alpha because the net torque acting on a rigid object it is its moment of inertia with respect to the rotation axis multiplied with angular acceleration alpha. This is Newton's second law rotational form.
All right. Now, uh, this is happening for a small angle theta because we have small amplitude oscillations. So it's able to oscillate with small amplitudes. That means the angle theta is small and alpha, the angular acceleration, is the second derivative of uh, the angular displacement with respect to time. With the small angle approximation, sine theta is approximately equal to theta and cosine theta is approximately equal to 1. So basically we're taking the first non-zero terms in the Taylor expansion. First non-zero terms. Okay, so with that, the torque with respect to the P uh, point P is approximately uh, capital M G capital L over 2 times theta. So it's in k hat direction. So now I'm looking at the uh, magnitude. And here uh, I have cosine theta replaced by 1. Spring restoring force capital L over 2 is equal to moment of inertia theta double dot second derivative with respect to time. The spring restoring force Fs, the spring force, is given by Hooke's law and it's equal to k times delta x, the spring constant times uh, the amount of stretch delta x. Now what is this delta x? So now if I make a small angular displacement here, there will be a small uh, arc length that I will be drawing here. So this small arc length as the angle decreases basically approaches this delta x. So I can say that this delta x, uh, the amount of stretch is approximately equal to delta s the arc length that I'm drawing as this uh, rod oscillates. All right, so that means the spring restoring force because the delta S will be equal to R times theta, L over two times theta. I can say that this is approximately equal to K L over two, which is the radius times the angle theta. So delta S is uh, the radius times theta, which is L over 2 times theta, which is approximately equal to delta X. So that's what I'm doing. So with that, we can rewrite this equation, equation of motion, mg capital L over 2 theta minus... Uh, for the restoring force, I substitute KL over 2 theta multiplied by theta. I get KL square over 4 theta is equal to moment of inertia theta double dot. So this gives me an equation of motion. Theta double dot equals uh, 1 over the moment of inertia IP MGL over 2 mgl over 2 minus kl square over 4 theta. Now simple harmonic motion equation of motion theta double dot is equal to minus omega square theta or x double dot equals minus omega square x. So I can write this equation of motion in this form theta double dot is equal to uh, now the moment of inertia is ml squared over 3 so it's 1 over ip is 3 over so let's put a minus sign here minus 3 over ml squared mgl over 2 is basically because of the minus sign here this becomes minus this becomes plus this, the first term is then KL square over 4 minus MGL 
over 2 multiplied with theta. So this is within the approximations here. So uh, I can see that this is in the form theta double dot equals minus omega square theta. So I can read the angular acceleration, uh, angular uh, frequency omega as uh, so multiply kl square, l squares will cancel 3k over 4m is the first, first term. So I obtain 3k over 4m minus now uh, ml square, mgl, m's would cancel and one of the l's will cancel. I will obtain 3g over 2l. So minus 3g over 2l square root so that would be the angular frequency of small amplitude oscillations okay so in this problem we have a uniform rod length l mass m attached to a spring at its midpoint which is the center of mass because it's uniform that is making small amplitude oscillations about its initial position, which is the vertical position and the moment of inertia is given. What is the angular frequency of small oscillations? So we consider the net torque with respect to point P under the influence of two forces, the weight and the spring restoring force, which have a components on the, uh, on the axis normal to the rod, mg sine theta and fs cosine theta. And sine theta for small angle oscillations is theta, cosine theta is 1. Uh, and uh, we have alpha, the angular acceleration, is a second derivative of theta with respect to time. The torque due to mg is mg sine theta L over 2 k hat using the right hand rule. The other one is in minus k hat direction, minus fs cosine theta L over 2 k hat. The spring restoring force is equal to in magnitude k times delta x delta x is the displacement from the original position and delta x is approximately equal to the arc length that we will be drawing here which is r times theta which is l over 2 times theta so the spring force becomes k l over 2 theta putting that into the equation of motion the torque equation uh, we can um, basically form theta double dot equals minus omega square theta, the simple harmonic motion equation of motion. And we can read omega square from this equation as square root 3k over 4m minus 3g over 2l.